Okay. I wanted to show you guys a couple of tips with editing white dogs on white backgrounds. First of all, you'll notice over here my background is white. Um, you can change this by right clicking on the background. I think it defaults to medium gray and that's what I use when I'm using my dark background images. But whenever I'm working on a white background, it's really hard to tell how white the white is. So I click over here and go to a white background and then you can actually see the reality of how white your white background is. So again, see how this looks really white right now, but then when we put it against a real white, it looks kind of gray. Um, so first thing I would do is, I'm actually gonna bring my whole exposure up a little bit. So that's gonna be my shadows and highlights. And I'm watching the background and I'm watching for any hot spots. I don't wanna overdo it, I'm just lifting a little bit. Mostly I'm looking in this area because I know I was a little hot on her forehead with my light. Um, the other thing you want to do is up here you can see these white squares around your shadow and highlight boxes. If you hit J on your keyboard, those go away. And if you hit J again, they come back in. And what they're going to show you is if I raise my whites all the way up, it's going to give you a warning when you hit full white. That's Now that area has no detail in it. It's just white on white. And then the same goes for black. It's going to show blue for anywhere where I've got lost detail in my black. So I always keep those activated whenever I'm doing a, a really like dark on dark or white on white situation or a black dog or a white dog on any background because I want to make sure that my eye isn't tricking me. So like this looks pretty close to full on white to me right now. But if you look up here in a second, when I roll my mouse over, you can see the number is 97.297 by 296.8. Those aren't quite at 100, so there's still detail there. Um, so the next thing I'm actually gonna do is her eyes look pretty dark and so do these shadows. So I'm just gonna raise my shadows up. And this is a really easy trick. Um, you know, you don't wanna mess with your full exposure that much. Mostly you wanna be in here using your highlight shadows, whites and black. So I'm lifting my shadows up to bring a little more light into her eyes and these shadow areas. And then I'm actually gonna lift my whites a little bit, but I'm, you know, I'm gonna keep an eye on that highlight. And I also, personally, I like to have some separation on my background back here. So I want, I don't want this to be pure white because then it just looks like she's floating. I want her to have a box around her. And as you can see, I ended up at negative five, so lower than I began. And the other thing I noticed is that this side of my white background is brighter than this side. So that means this light wasn't firing as high. And that's an easy fix. I'm just gonna go up here to my masks. I'm gonna grab my linear gradient and I'm gonna drag it in from this side. Wherever it shows red is what area is gonna be affected. And then I'm actually just gonna lift my highlights a little bit so I'm affecting my shadows and um, highlights to kind of match this side of the image. And then I'm also noticing that the bottom of the image is darker than the top. So I'm going to create a new mask by clicking here. Again, grab a linear mask, drag up from the bottom, probably up into her neck a little bit, and then lift that. Again, small, small adjustments. You don't want to overdo it. Okay, cool. So that's already looking better. Now, as I said before, the light was shining at an angle down on top of her and her white head got a little bit blown out here. So I want to bring some detail back into that. So I'm going to add a new mask, a brush, and over here you can tr control how feathered and soft the outside of it is and how much um, is it's flowing, like how much, if it was like a... Um, you know, spray can, you would think like how much of the airbrush would like flow at one time. So I've got it on full flow and full softness. And I'm going to use my mouse, um, two fingers on my key, my trackpad moving up or down to change the size. And I'm just going to paint in this area. And again, anything that shows red is what's going to be affected. So the edges were, were still okay. So I'm just getting the middle and I just want to adjust the highlights and bring those back in. I don't want it to look fake though. So I'm just bringing in a little detail like that. And then this is a good basic edit to start with. Um, but if you wanted to, you could go ahead and zoom in. 
and take a look at her eyes. And I'm going to make her pupils a little darker. So new mask, brush, lower my size of my brush a little bit. And her eyes are really dark brown, so it's hard to kind of tell where the pupil is. But I know it's kind of in this area. So I'm just painting where I want it to be darker. This is a real easy fix if your client has cataracts. And then just, again, a little drop. You don't want it to look fake. You just want to bring the darkness down a little bit. And then again, new brush. Do not be afraid to make tons of brush layers, okay? Um, and I'm going to take these highlights. This She had like really long eyelashes and her hair hung over her eyes. So we didn't have a super strong highlight as we would with a short-haired dog. And I just want to affect the whites in those. And it's okay if your whites blow out a little bit in your highlights. That's fine. Um, so I'm going to just tap the mask button to close out of that and back back up a little bit. So that looks a little better there. And then this shadow under her chin is bothering me. So I'm going to come in here, create another mask, make my brush a little bigger, and then just paint over that shadow area. And I'm actually going to use the exposure button to lift that back up. Okay, awesome. Close out of your mask so you're affecting the whole image, not just the masked area. And I'm going to bring my contrast up a little bit, which is going to make my blacks blacker and my whites whiter. And that looks pretty good. And then you can just hit Y on your keyboard if you want to see the before and after. So that's just with a few minutes of really basic changes. I didn't even leave the main um, panel in. Lightroom. Super, super easy. And there you have it.